they're going to get pulled over. I'm going to take care of all of your needs in your food stamps and housing subsidies and free health care and free telephones and whatever you want. I'm going to give it to you. And um, just remember, I'm the good guy. The problem with that kind of thinking is that that's been going on for over 50 years. And where has it gotten people? In the 60s, we were talking about eradicating poverty, eliminating poverty. The good people were going to do that. Did we eliminate it? Here we are, a half a century later, with 10 times more people on food stamps. More poverty, broken homes, welfare out of wedlock births, crime, incarceration. All the things that were supposed to be better are not only worse, they're much worse. And at some point, we have to begin to think, how do we change that dynamic? Is there a role for government? And also, we have to, at some point, stop allowing the purveyors of division to succeed. You know, our strength in this country is in our unity. But the purveyors of hatred have come in and convinced everybody that there's a war on women, that there's race wars, that there's income wars, that there's religious wars, that there's age wars, that there's a war on virtually everything. And that if somebody disagrees with you, you're supposed to hate on them. Whatever happened to people being able to sit down and have an intelligent conversation? Have you ever noticed that before people get divorced, they stop talking? They stop communicating? The next thing you know, their spouse is a devil incarnate. That's what happens when people get in their respective corners and start throwing hand grenades. And it's not getting us anywhere. That's happening also between the African-American community and the police. The purveyor, purveyors of hatred doing exactly the same thing that I talked about. Getting between, getting people off in their respective corners, hating on each other, rather than sitting down and having intelligent conversation. One of the things that really impressed me this summer, I went to Ferguson and, uh, and met with, uh, you know, the, city leaders, as well as people from the community, and including some of the people who were involved in the riot. And they had been working together. They'd been having regular communication. And I was so impressed with how respectful they were of each other, and how actually friendly they were with each other. Why? Because they knew each other. It's about relationships. And that's what we have to, instead of getting to respect the corners and fighting, we need to get to know each other and then to be able to talk. And a lot of times when you talk, even if you come from different perspectives, you discover that you have a lot more in common than you have that separates you. And that's how we're actually able to make progress. One of the reasons that, you know, I'm sure everybody knows I'm a vociferous opponent of political correctness, because it keeps people from talking to each other. You can't talk about that. You can't mention that. Why not? It seems to me like a lot of people gave their lives so that we could have freedom of speech in this country. Why would we stop now? I bet they would turn over in their graves if they thought they had shed their blood so that we could kowtow to people who are trying to control our speech and control our thinking, and control who we are. One of the subjects that frequently people won't talk about in the black community is the fact that 73% of the babies are born out of wedlock. I gotta tell you, that's a problem. And usually, with that first baby, that woman's education stops. Those children, are four times at least as likely to live in poverty, to wind up in the penal system or the welfare system. 
no one can tell me that that is a good situation. And we need to be thinking about how do we stop that situation? Now, I've seen some wonderful community-based organizations around the country, private sector funded, that actually provide child care for those women so that they can go back to school and get their GED or their associate's degree or their bachelor's degree or their master's degree, learn to take care of themselves and teach their children to do the same thing. That's how you break those cycles of poverty. But if you just continue down the same pathway, it just continues to grow. 